Good morning. My name is Jeff Namey, and I am the Director of Sales and Marketing for Swagelock Western New York. I'd like you to welcome you all to the webinar Wednesday pre presented by Swagelock Western New York. We have recently hosted webinars on regulator selection, an orbital welding overview, and the Swagelock tube fitting advantage. We will continue our virtual training series with new webinars presented every two weeks from now through the end of September. You can view the complete schedule on the we webinar series on, our, on a link on our home page. Today, Jim Nowoyski is presenting our webinar on valve introduction. Jim is a subject matter expert on valve applications. His background includes 25 years of industrial valve sales and regulating ball and control valves. He's been an associate of Swagelock Western New York for the past four years. Jim's territory encompasses the greater Buffalo region. The industries Jim is involved with are power, skid fabrication, chemical, research, and OEM. I'm gonna just cover a few quick housekeeping items. Um, I'd like to remind you all that you all are on mute. You can use a chat function for questions. You can minimize you can use the minimize function on the right side of your screen to see the full presentation. We look forward to Jim's presentation and learning more about how wage lock valves can meet your demanding applications. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jim. Thank you, Jim. Great, thanks, Jeff, I appreciate it. I'm just gonna go through a quick agenda with everyone. We just finished up the introductions. Uh, we're first gonna talk about uh, two of the wage lock ball valves, the 40 series and the 60 series. And then we're going to touch a little bit on uh, needle valves, uh, a few of the, uh, the two of the series, the, N, the O series and the N series. Um, but that's going to be very quick at the, uh, near the end of the presentation. Um, we will have, uh, well, we may have a little bit of time for questions, uh, but what we would probably like you to do is to direct those questions by email afterward to Chris Gilman, and we'll get those to the proper people at the end of the presentation. A little bit about Swagelock Western New York. Uh, we have three locations in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. Our uh, Rochester facility is our headquarters. We have a 20, 23,000 square foot facility. Uh, we currently have over 40 associates working uh, at Swage Lock Western New York. And between the three locations, uh, we have over 7,000 Swage Lock parts on hand. Some of the things that we do, we, or what we do, uh, is a Swage Lock Custom Solutions and Assemblies. Most of this is done out of the Rochester facility, but we do have some support in the Buffalo branch as well. We do have uh, three engineers on staff uh, in the Rochester office and engineering support in Buffalo as well. We also have equipment and tool rentals, uh, loaners, uh, such as uh, vendors, orbital welders. Um, we have, uh, also have a vendor managed inventory available. Uh, we do offer free tubing deliveries on selected days. Uh, we offer, also offer e-business solutions. We do offer uh, facility leakage surveys through our engineering department. Uh, and some of the on-site training and educational programs that we have are tube fitting, installation and safety, orbital welder demonstrations, uh, tube bending, and uh, our Swage Lock University. We do some sourcing of non-Swage Lock products that go into some of our panel designs and things like that. And we also have uh, some ability to do some pump sizing. Just a real quick uh, about uh, Swage Lock's core values. Uh, we have our, our customer focus. Uh, we try to be uh, use integrity when, in everything that we do. Uh, we do offer high quality uh, pro uh, uh, performance in our products, our process, and our services. Uh, continuous improvement. We're constantly trying to get better. Um, respect not only of our internal people, but of our customers as well. And we try to be on the leading edge as far as innovation uh, for new products and anything we can do to help our customers. A little bit about safe valve selection. Some of the parameters that we look at when we're trying to help uh, our customers uh, to select a valve. Um, first off is the valve function. Is this gonna be an on off valve? Is, are you just looking to start and stop flow? Or are you looking to control flow? An on off valve is gonna be a ball valve, which is the first two valves we're gonna talk about. And the needle valve is more of a control uh, valve uh, for controlling flow. Some of the system parameters that we look at when selecting a valve is the pressure of the system, the temperature of the media flowing through, what type of media is gonna flow through the valve, and the flow of the valve. Some of the other things that we do take into consideration, uh, maintenance on the valve, maintenance on the system, 
uh, the uh, cycle expectations of the customer, the size of the valve in the system, uh, the cleanliness of the valve. Uh, obviously, safety is always a concern. Uh, I'm sure no one is concerned with cost at all. Uh, and actuation methods, uh, we can offer manual actuation on, on, on all of our valves and then we can offer um, uh, pneumatic and electric actuation um, in those situations. So we're gonna get into this, we're gonna get into ball valves to start. Here's some common ball valves. Ball valves are, are some of the most common on off valves you will likely see. I'm sure that in any of your systems, you've seen ball valves through that. These are just some of the offerings that Swagelock has as far as ball valves. The first one that we're gonna talk about today is going to be the uh, 40G series, the one piece instrumentation ball valve. The Swagelock 40G series is a one piece instrumentation ball valve. Um, and the, is an evolutionary change to the Swagelock 40 series line. It combines the proven features of the 40 series uh, and the standard live loaded T valve with an innovative seal design that allows it to perform in both environmental and heated process applications. This is a uh, quick uh, overview of the ball valves in the 40, in this, uh, that we offer. The 40 and the 60 series are what we're gonna talk about today, but we do have some additional valves in our series uh, for uh, chemical compatibility, high temperature, aggressive service, uh, and high pressure. The 40G series valve line encompasses stainless steel bodies from 1 16th of an inch up to 3 8 of an inch. Uh, the sizes along with the straight angle and cross pattern configurations. The products that remain unchanged in the 40 series are brass bodies uh, and the all the 40 series and the four, five and six way switching valves and the four and six way crossing valves. Some of the features of the 40G series is uh, in improved temperature range from minus 65 Fahrenheit up to 300 Fahrenheit. This is designed again for environmental and heated process applications. Uh, these valves have a working pressure up to 3000 PSIG. Uh, it does incorporate a live loaded packing system. Single piece uh, patent pending encapsulated packing system. And it is a direct drop in replacement for any existing ser 40 series valves that you may have in the field now. Some of the options include uh, different end connections. Uh, we'll get into that uh, later in the, in the presentation, but you can use uh, compression ends, female pipe ends, uh, weld at ends, uh, different packing materials. We do offer special cleaning on these valves, uh, multiple uh, handles, as well as uh, oval and nylon handles, locking handles, uh, and actuators. We do offer uh, pneumatic and electric actuation as well. So on the 40G series, what has stayed the same in this valve? Obviously the swage like manufacturing tolerances and the reliability will always be the same. Um, the 40G is the same external dimensions uh, as the comparable 40 series models, which ensures again a drop in replacement. The materials used in the 40G are very comparable to the 40 series. Uh, one difference is the packing material, uh, which improves the performance and the temperature range, which we will discuss later. And the 40G possesses the same certifications and approvals as the 40 series. So what has changed? The inline packing adjustments are now being able to be uh, changed with common tools. The handle insert on the 40G is changed from brass to stainless steel. This improves the corrosion resistance and the overall durability of the handle connection. And the stem on the, on the 40G was changed to a double flat design. This improves the durability of the handle connection as well as ensures a proper field assembly of the handle with the flats indicating orientation of the orifice. It also allows an actuator to be installed in the field without a special option, any, any special options when doing an ordering. So talked about greater temperature range. The 40 series, the temperature range was between 40 uh, our 50, our 50F and 150F. Our live loaded series improved that slightly. And you can see that in the 40G series, we were able to greatly improve the uh, temperature range from minus 65F up to 300F. One of the design features is a single piece seal design. 
to achieve this expanded temperature rating and improve the thermal cycling ability, the 40G series incorporates a single piece seal design. This seal design consists of a live loaded single piece encapsulated packing system with a balanced trunnion on the ball stem. I'm not gonna uh, discuss these changes in a little bit more detail. The encapsulated packing. The 40G series uses a seamless single piece encapsulated packing constructed of modified PTFE. The material was chosen because of its durability, thermal stability, resistance to cold flow throughout the entire temperature range and compatibility with system fluids. The live loaded packing system. The 40G valves utilize a live loaded packing system as temperature fluctuations cause the packing material to expand or contract. The springs that you can see here maintain a load on the packing, improving performance throughout thermal cycling, which reduces the need for packing adjustments. Uh, this patent pending assembly process applies a precise load to the disc springs. The packing bolt is then applied to maintain this load. The result of this direct load method is a more consistent product with balanced pressure applied from the ball stem to the packing. Should packing adjustments be required, the hex shaped nut allows inline adjustments with standard tools. Our balanced trunnion patent pending design. The 40G series has an upper trunnion as well as an increased size of the, trun the lower trunnion in comparison to the 40 series. A trunnion pocket has also been added to the body, as you can see down here. The additional trunnion at the top better aligns the ball stem and packing within the valve cavity and provides a more directed balanced loading on the packing for improved sealing. The lower trunnion rests in a precisely machined counterboard pocket in the valve uh, in the valve body. The trunnion pocket is not in the flow path of the system media, uh, thus the media or any particular in the media will not be trapped in the pocket. So a quick product summary on the 40 and the 40 or 40 G and the 40 series. The change from a brass handle insert to a stainless steel handle insert uh, increases uh, stability and strength on the, on the handle. The packing bolt has been standardized to a standard hex style, making it very easy to make adjustments in the field. The loading of the valve stem has changed, uh, is now live loaded with a series of uh, disc springs, as you can see here. The ball stem has changed with the addition of the upper trunnion and a larger lower trunnion, which decreases the packing volume, uh, improving the thermal cycling capability. Uh, and the packing was changed from a single piece design, as you can see here on the right, compared to the older two-piece design, uh, which again eliminates a potential leak point. And finally, you still have the same one-piece body style on the 40 and the 40G series. Now we're going quickly, but I've got a half an hour. The 60 series is the next valve that we're going to talk about. 60 series line is one of the top selling swage lock valve products. It represents an important part of the, valve, the swage lock valve offering. Uh, for process applications. A uh, little bit of the, uh, a, it is a general purpose valve, but in within the 60 series line, we do have uh, special application valves for steam, high temperature, fire, chlorine. We have an all welded design. Uh, we also have a low temperature design and a rapid cycle service uh, valve. General features on the 60 series. Uh, temperature range from minus 20 F up to 450 F. Uh, we do have a low temperature option available, goes to uh, minus 65 Fahrenheit. And we do have a high temperature option available up to 850 Fahrenheit. Standard working pressure on the 60 series is 2200 PSIG. Uh, we do have a high pressure option on, with that as well, up to 3000 PSIG. Uh, sizes from 1 8 of an inch up to 2 inch. And this valve is available in stainless steel, brass, carbon steel, and many special alloys, such as Inconel, Hastelloy, uh, and Monel. This is a ball valve again, so it is an on-off valve, a two-way valve. We do have one option for a three-way switching valve in the 60 series as well. What we're gonna talk about now is what makes the 60 series a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna talk about the stem seal. We're going to, uh, the stem springs here at the top of this, the seat, the packing and support glands, 
the chevron packing and the stem bearings. We will get into these in detail on each one. The stem bearings. The stem bearings in the 60 series provide a smooth surface where the stem interfaces with the body. These bearings have serrations, uh, as you can see in this picture here, which keep the lubricant embedded between the mating surfaces. This reduces the actuation torque and the potential for galling, providing smooth actuation resulting in extended service life of the valve. The stem is also assembled from the bottom up, uh, which uh, again prov provides a blowout proof stem and materials available are alloy 750 and peak. The stem springs, as you can see here, at the upper portion of the stem seal, a 60 series contains Belleville, uh, opposing Belleville washers, which make up the stem spring assembly. Uh, the function of these springs is to apply, apply a consistent load on the packing. The sp stem springs compensate for the loss of load on the stem packing caused by pressure and temperature fluctuations or stem seal wear, most common in high cycle applications. Uh, this does contribute to fewer packing adjustments over the life of the valve which again can reduce the overall cost of ownership and much less uh, need for packing adjustments. The packing and support glands seen here at the top uh, are located between the stem springs and the two-piece chevron packing. What they do is they transmit the load onto the packing while fully encapsulating the packing, minimizing cold flow, which is accelerated at elevated temperatures. The chevron packing, as you can see on the left here is the conventional packing used in, in a, lot, a lot of the ball valves and on the right, the swage lock uh, chevron, two piece chevron packing. Um, this is the two piece chevron packing is constructed of reinforced PTFE. Uh, this is again, a two piece packing, which makes the 60 series truly live loaded. Let's see, and as you can see here in picture two, the two pieces of chevron packing work together to create a robust stem and bonnet seal. As an axial load is applied from the stem nut at the top, it is transmitted radially, radially along the entire length of the packing to the stem. In conventional seals, you see here on the left, this load is transmitted to the packing at much higher loads with an uneven force distribution. This will ultimately lead to a lower cycle life, higher actuation torques uh, as compared to the swage like two-piece chevron packing. This is just a, a graphic illustration of the, how the packing, how the stem seal works. On the left, you, you show a packing with the nominal load. You can see that the springs are not compressed. Um, as you see the springs begin to compress, transmitting the load through the glands onto the two-piece chevron packing. You'll notice that the light blue on both sides shows a good seal between the stem and the body of the valve. Picture on the right shows an overstressed condition where the springs are almost flat. As you can see, this condition did not significantly change the load along the stem, which is still depicted in light blue, uh, because the packing uh, support absorbs this force with the two piece. You can see this slight offset here. Um, and this, uh, this even load uh, distribution along the stem will eventually lead to lower actuation torque and less wear over time as compared to the con a more conventional seal. Now going into the seat seal. Five main components that we're going to talk about today on the, uh, on the seat seal is the cone disc spring, the ball, valve, the ball of the valve itself, the seat, the front support ring, and the flange seal. The cone disc spring, which is located right here, compensates for seat wear, pressure changes, and temperature changes. Uh, it also reduces the seat wear from pressure surges. It will seal, this is a bi-directional valve, so it seals regardless of flow direction, and this is constructed of 316 stainless steel. I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, slides here that show how the seat design compensates for low and high pressure. Under low pressure, uh, the seals are created by the cone disc spring loaded seats pushing against the ball. Uh, pressure is not required to create a seal. As you can see by the depiction here, a uniform seal is created on both the upstream and the downstream uh, of the valve. This illustrates that pressure is not required to maintain a, a leak tight seal. Under high pressure, the ball is forced downstream, flexing the downstream seat and creating a seal. The upstream seat 
uh, also flexes the ball movement and maintains the seal uh, on the back end. This is unique to this type of compensating seal design. As the seat is forced downstream due to pressure, the seat spring compresses, thus reducing the force on the ball. The reduction of force reduces wear and again, leads to longer cycle life. The support ring, which is located in the, in the body cavity next to the ball, um, supports the seat and protects the seat against seat bulge into the body cavity, uh, premature wear and deformation. This is also made of 316 stainless steel. Seat materials available in the 60 series, reinforced PTFE, Alloy 750, um, Peak, polyethylene, and virgin PTFE. This is a three-piece ball valve. It allows for inline maintenance. Uh, on the four bolt uh, patterns, uh, the bolts can be removed and the center body will swing out to facilitate seat replacement. Uh, this allows for a fast and easy maintenance with the valve in line, as long as you do have isolation valves on both ends. Um, replacement seal kits are available for most of the valves that require them. This is just the last slide in this out the 60 series that shows that the uh, a number of the different end connections that are available. Again, because this is a three piece valve, uh, you can have varying uh, end connections. You may have one valve, you may need a tube fitting on one end and a female pipe there on the other, and this valve can accommodate those situations when they arise. Last valve that we're going to talk about today is the, uh, the needle valves, which is a control valve, which is different than the on off. Some of the things uh, that consider when you're when choosing a needle valve, uh, first off, why would you use a needle valve? It is a slow opening uh, valve. Uh, so if, you're to, if it's not an on off situation and you do need to regulate flow or throttle flow, uh, a needle valve might be the right application for you. Um, one of the things that's different is why is the packing location important? Um, if the stem threads on this are gonna come in contact with the system media, there is a potential for uh, lube, which is in the, in the stem or in the threads, uh, getting into the media and contaminating the media. When is a soft seat stem tip a good choice? Uh, if you need a more robust seal uh, and you want lower leak rates over time, uh, the problem with a softer seat is that it is susceptible to wear and temperature changes. When is a metal tip, stem tip a good choice? Uh, it is a better compatibility with aggressive medias uh, it has a capability to reach higher temperatures, and the metal-to-metal -metal seat uh, is available, uh, but it, again, is not good for repetitive gas shutoff. Why choose an O-ring seal, which you can see in the bottom picture? Um, it's good for use where uh, adjustments to the packing may be difficult, uh, but you, because it is using an elastomer, you may sacrifice a part of your temperature range with that particular feature. Here's the uh, some of the uh, Swage like needle valves, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the 01 and 18 series and our severe service N series valve today. Quick needle valve overview. Um, it, uh, it is a control valve and it does allow for regulation of flow. Uh, the needle valve is a very proven design. The first patent was in 1865. So this valve, type of valve has been around for a while. Uh, it has very high temperature capabilities, and because it has the ability to do metal-to-metal -metal seating, it is a very uh, good valve for some aggressive medias. Some of the disadvantages. This is a globe pattern valve, so there's a lot of twists and turns to get the media through this valve. Uh, that can create a problem depending on what you're uh, flowing through the valve. And because this is not a quarter turn valve like a ball valve, it is a multi-turn valve, uh, the actuation time is increased. These are a list of the swage like needle valves. The O series and the G series are our, our general service valves with uh, pressure ratings from five to 6,000 PSI. Our severe service valve, which is the N series valve, uh, is a uh, pressure rating up to 10,000 PSI. And our gauge or general service valves, uh, which are located right here. The O-series valve is available in uh, end connection sizes from an eighth inch up to three quarters of an inch uh, and it, with a max pressure pressure rating of 5,000 PSIG. This is a gen good general all around needle valve. And the N-series was a more severe service. Uh, if you have a need for a higher pressure, higher temperature rating, uh, the N-series uh, is, is probably the best valve on the market for severe service.
any connection sizes, again, from an eighth of an inch up to half an inch. Going to go through some features on the uh, severe service valve. One of the uh, rolled and plated threads. Uh, the uh, threads on this valve are rolled instead of being cut into the metal, which provides added strength to the uh, to the um, to the stem. The silver plated threads prevent the stem from galling. The threads on this on the severe service valve are out of the wetted area, which presents uh, which prevents uh, lubricant washout and contamination of the of the media. It does have an exposed packing bolt, which uh, permits the packing adjustments while the valve is in the open position. It also provides the safety back seating, provides extra sealing to the stem area when the valve is in the fully open position. And this, val this valve also incorporates a non-rotating ball tip. Uh, the flat machine gun on top of the ball allows for rotation only around the vertical axis. Uh, this ensures a repeatable sealing surface. Few of the different st uh, stem choices on the N series. The ball stem, which we saw in that in that uh, previous picture, is good for a shutoff uh, system isolation. Uh, it is a metal to metal seat, so it provides excellent chemical resistance and high temperature performance. Uh, and it is machined flat top, uh, provides consistent sealing surface. Uh, the regulating stem choice allows for a regulation of flow, but again, as we've talked about earlier, it's not recommended for repetitive gas shutoff where the soft seat regulating stem does provide a reliable gas shutoff. Uh, it does allow for, uh, for adjustments to flow and a soft seat uh, does limit you a bit uh, on comp chemical compatibility as well as uh, high temperature performance. And that is a quick wrap up of the two ball valves we talked about and the needle valve. Um, I know we went very quickly. I hope you uh, got something out of that uh, presentation. These are some of the assemblies that we do in our CS department. Uh, as you can see, we have a wide variety of applications. Uh, we'd be happy to size uh, uh, full panels for you or help you out with any type of valve selections on panels that you may uh, have already in service. If you have any of this, get a hold of your local rep or myself uh, after this, and uh, we would be happy to help you. Our next webinar is on July 8th with the GB valve, ball valve introduction. Uh, this is our very, very tough service applica uh, application ball valve. Uh, it's brand new. It has just been available for about a month. And it'd be really good if you have any type of uh, high pressure situations that you need a good ball valve. Um, I would suggest uh, signing up for this on July 8th. Thank you again for your time. I uh, hope I didn't go too quickly through that. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to forward them on to Chris.